a good nerve Shabbos. I hope you're having a great day. This week's Torah portion is the portion of Vayishlach, one of the most beautiful portions of the Torah, with so many hidden and deep lessons for each and every one of us to learn. In fact, right in the beginning, when Jacob is running away from his father-in-law, Laban, and he's coming to confront his brother Esau, and he has all these people coming with him. What does the Torah tell us? Katonti mikola chasadim. Jacob was worried. But why was he worried? God had promised him everything will be okay. But Jacob had realized all the blessing in his life. His children, his family, his financial status, his health. And Jacob said, maybe, just maybe, I became, he became humbled from all the good. He said, maybe, just maybe, God has already given me all my good. The rabbis tell us that when it comes to spirituality, to holiness, the more God bestows on us, the more God blesses us, the more humble it makes us. Like a little candle, the closer it comes to the greater flame, to a bonfire, the smaller the candle gets, the less significant it gets. So too, when God bestows us and showers us with His countenance, it should make us humble. Not like some, that the more you give them, the more arrogant and pompous they get. Oh, look at me. But there's something special in this week's Torah portion that always hits a chord with me. We all know the story of the struggle between Jacob and the angel. Jacob is struggling with the angel of Esau. And it's at that moment when we get our name, Yisrael, God changes Jacob's name to Yisrael. And it's a name that we kept forever. We're not called the children of Abraham, of Isaac, of Sarah, of Rebekah, the children of Israel. Why? What happens? And the story, of course, is of Jacob crossing this little bridge in the middle of the night. It's dark. And he has a struggle. He wrestles with the angel of Esau. There's a battle between Esau and Jacob. And Jacob gets injured. Esau's angel injures him by his hip. And what happens afterwards? The most remarkable thing. Jacob holds on. He grabs the angel of Esau, so to speak, metaphorically. And he doesn't want to let him leave. And the angel says, let me leave. I need to go. And Jacob says, no, I will only let you go if you bless me. And the question, of course, is how crazy is that? If someone wants to kill you, someone wrestles with you, he injures you on your hip. In fact, till today, Jews will be kosher. Don't eat the filet mignon because we're remembering the injury of Jacob. Why would you want his blessing? Get him out of there. Chase him away. Let him run. Why does Jacob say, I won't let you go? And the answer the rabbis give us is that this is a metaphor. This is a lesson that Jacob is teaching his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren for generations to come. Today we live in a world where there's so much anti-Semitism and so much hate towards Jews. There's so many obstacles, so many challenges. We don't know where to turn and what to do. Tells us, Jacob, when you have a challenge, when someone hurts you, when someone makes you limp, you can't leave that place till you find a blessing. Till you find the strength to grow from there. Till you find something from that episode. From that challenge. That you could take. And you could be able to become stronger. To become greater. And to become better. We all know the famous story of Woody the Woodpecker. Which ended up being one of the greatest books. That sold millions of books. And the young couple who were married in the 50s. And they finally decided to go on a honeymoon. And where were they going on a honeymoon? To this old rustic wooden cabin in the woods. And as they show up on this wooden cabin, they hear a peck, a peck, and a peck, and they can't sleep all night, and suddenly there's a hole, and it starts pouring rain. And the next three days, or two days, it was pouring rain, and they, instead of having a honeymoon for these newlyweds, they had rain and cold, and the wood the peck came every night, back and back again. But on the way home, instead of complaining, Imagine if it was a Jewish couple, they'd be complaining, Oh, you vague, why didn't you take me to the Ritz-Carlton or to the Four Seasons? But what did he do? He says, this was the, his wife looks at him and says, this is, we got to find something beautiful from this. This was our best weekend. You're an artist. What are you going to do? And that's where Woody, the woodpecker, came from, which later made him into such a wealthy man and so famous. And 50 years later, he said, if there was ever a weekend, the greatest weekend of my life, it was that weekend. What does Jacob tell the angel? I'm not going to let you leave King Berachtani. Just why we are 
They're called the children of Israel. Because Jacob tells us that we have the strength within each other, uh, one of us, to never leave a moment until we turn it into a blessing. May Hashem bestow His blessing, His love, His happiness on each and every one of us. May He make us strong and proud as Jews. And may He let us find the blessing in everything in our lives.